This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. If you're in the habit of simply grabbing your reverb plugin, dragging it across and dropping it into the insert section of your track, then you may be falling into a trap that many of us do when we first start mixing. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. I think the problem which occurs here is up until the point where we insert that reverb plugin, we've been listening to a really dry source, perhaps something like a vocal that was recorded in a vocal booth. And when we drop that reverb on, suddenly the whole thing comes to life and it seems like some magic occurs. And perhaps we'll adjust things like the size of the reverb and blend the dry and wet mix, but pretty much we'll feel like the magic is done and we move on with the rest of of our mix, not realizing that every time we do this, we're reducing the clarity and adding to the overall muddiness of our mix. So most of the five essential reverb tricks I'm gonna show you in this video relate to creating a space for that reverb and creating more clarity in our mix. Now I wanna say up front, it doesn't matter which door you're using, the principles are the same across the board in this video. So let's get started with the basics. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to commit to no longer inserting your reverb plugins directly onto the channel where you want to apply them. Instead, we're gonna be using buses. Now in your door, they may be called auxes or effects channels or something like that, but the principle's always the same. It's a channel where the reverb's gonna live and we're gonna send the signal from the original source, in this case, a vocal to that channel. So here in Studio One, I'm gonna do it in the manual way so you can more easily follow along in your door. I'm gonna right click here and just select add bus channel. Okay, that creates my bus channel. I'm gonna rename it right away. I'll call it uh, Vox Rev. The reason I do that is because you end up usually with many buses for different effects and things, and you wanna be able to easily identify each one. So the next thing I'm gonna do is grab my reverb plugin. This time I'm gonna drag it and drop it into the insert section of that bus that I just created. So there it is, I'm just gonna pin it there. Now it doesn't matter which plugin you're using. I happen to be using one of the stock plugins which comes with Studio One here, but the principles are gonna be the same with any plugin. Now the next thing I need to do is to send my original signal, my vocal in this case, to that bus. So I'll go to the send section of that vocal and I'll just go to my destinations here and select that bus I just created there, Vox Rev. So now that I've done that, I'm going to have a quick listen to what I've got so far. Was it the touch of my hand? Okay, there's definitely some reverb on those vocals quite a bit too much, I would say. That's okay, we're gonna fix that. But before we do, there's another important thing I want you to do whenever you use a reverb plugin in a bus like this. Usually on these plugins, there's gonna be a mix control. It's gonna uh, blend the dry and the wet mix together. In this case, on this plugin, it's locked at the moment. So I'll unlock it and show you what I mean. So this blends the dry and the wet signals. I wanna, want you to make sure that it's always completely wet and we're not hearing the dry signal with this plugin or on this channel at all. That's because we've already got the dry signal on the original track, okay? We don't wanna add to it at this point. So the next thing I'm gonna do is grab the fader for that channel that I just created, that bus, and drag it all the way down to the bottom, play my track, and then gradually just blend the reverb in. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? Okay, that's much better. But in all honesty, we haven't really gained any advantage yet over using the insert method that we looked at earlier. But that's all gonna change now. So this trick is often called the Abbey Road reverb trick. And essentially what it does is EQs the reverb part of our signal, not the original source. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab an EQ plugin. In this case, again, just the stock plugin which comes with Studio One. And I'm gonna drop it in as an insert again, but this time just before 
or the reverb plugin that we just inserted there. Now, some people use this after the reverb and you can try that if you like, but generally, I find I get better results if it's before the reverb because I'm uh, adjusting or refining the signal before it gets processed by the reverb. Now it doesn't matter which plugin you use, but you do want to make sure that you've got a low pass and a high pass filter, or sometimes it's called a low cut and high cut. On this particular plugin, it's called low cut. So I'll just switch that on and then I'll also switch on my high cut. Okay. Now, in terms of settings, with my low cut or the part which is dealing with the low frequencies, I'm going to set this to uh, let's set it to 600 hertz okay this is a really common setting for this technique the other thing i want to make sure of is that my slope is set to around about 12 db it could be 18 but in this case i'll just leave it as 12 okay the same for the high cut we can set that to 12 or 18 something like those settings but this time i'm going to set the frequency to uh, 10k okay now this one is much more flexible and you're going to adjust that for your particular track um, but usually that low cut is going to be set to 600 hertz okay so what this is doing in the low end it's cutting out all of the mud which can occur and which can build up with each reverb plugin that you add and then in terms of the high frequencies we're getting rid of some of those especially things like sibilance sibilance etc which can really become a bit sort of harsh and distracting in that high end now as a final part to this tip you can also do a little bit of a, a cut at around about 2k okay so maybe something like around about here this can be really useful with things like vocals you may want to adjust the cue of course but things like uh, vocals which can become a little bit harsh in those areas and they can get sort of accentuated by the reverb okay so that's a very basic setup and you may want to adjust it for your particular song so let's just have a listen to the vocals before and after uh, we have this eq applied so what i'm going to do is just solo the vocals and solo the uh, channel which has the reverb on it and have a quick listen without the eq first of all was it the touch of my hand was it the way that I stand? And now with the EQ. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way? So we're still getting that nice spacious effect here, but we haven't added to the mud. Just to demonstrate this a little bit further, what I'm going to do is turn down the actual original vocal. Okay, so we're just listening to the reverb channel, the reverb bus. Have a listen. That's what we're now getting. But before we had the EQ, what we were getting was this. So especially with that low end there, you can hear how that may become problematic because if we're adding that with every single channel that we're using with reverb you know backing vocals all kinds of other instruments then we're really going to get a low end build up likewise with some of those more harsh sounds in the mid and high frequencies we're going to get a kind of a build up with those as well so there's quite a few variations on this next trick i'm going to show you i'll show you my simple version first of all and we'll talk about those variations later before we get into it though i've done a little bit of pre-setup here i've already created another bus just as we did earlier and i've named it vox dell that's a little bit of a clue as to what we're going to be doing and then also i've created the send for that bus already and i've switched off the send for the reverb that we just created a moment ago so we won't be hearing that for a moment but we'll switch it back on later now what i'm going to do is grab a delay plugin and drop it into the insert section of that new 
channel. Doesn't matter which delay plugin you use, I'm using Replica XT, but most of them are capable of doing what I'm about to show you. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is grab that mix control as we did with the reverb and switch it all the way up to 100 so that we're only hearing the delay in that channel, okay? Now let's have a listen to see or hear what it's doing so far. Was it the was touch it of, my my of my head, my head, my head, my head? So you're hearing many repeats there. We don't want that. We just want one repeat at the moment. And normally with the delay plugin, you'll control that with the feedback control. So I'll pull feedback all the way down to zero, and that's just going to give us one repeat. Have a listen. Was it the was touch it of, the my, touch of my head? Okay, so we've got one repeat, but it's kind of a long delay, yeah? We want it to be really short. So I'm gonna change this from uh, sort of a musical control to a control which is in milliseconds. We can see that here. Do that on your plugin if you have that capability. And I'm gonna make it pretty short. Let's start off at around about sort of, well, around about 50 milliseconds, but we're likely to go lower than that. But let's have a quick listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Okay, so we're hearing a really short delay there. I'll just pull it down just a little bit more. We'll go to about 30, have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Okay, so we're getting a kind of a very short delay there, and it's all in the middle. So an important thing I reckon to do at this point is to make a little bit of difference between the delay for the left and the right channels. Now on this particular plugin, the way you do that is go to the panning controls and you've got this offset control here for the left and right channels. Let's just push that up to, I don't know, about five or six. Let's have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand? Now what we've done here is taken that very, very dry vocal and we've kind of put it into a bit of space but it doesn't sound very natural at the moment. The actual effect is way too evident. And personally, I like to be a bit more subtle with it. So what we're gonna do is the same as we did with the reverb. We'll drag the fader down on the channel and we'll gradually blend it in. And I'm sort of looking for that point where you become ever so slightly aware of the effect. And then we're just gonna back off from that. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand? Too close. Now the idea here, as I say, is to put our vocals in a little bit of space so they're not completely dry. But the way I think of this is it takes away some of the heavy lifting from the actual reverb plugin, which is following it, if that makes sense. So if we're not careful, if we just use a single reverb plugin, it can actually push the vocal away and make it less present. So with this, we can keep the vocal nice and present and in some space and just have the, the main reverb plugin take care of those nice long tails. So I'm gonna switch that back on again and let's have a listen to what we've got so far. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand? Now when it's soloed like this, you're really aware of those tails, but in the context of the mix, let's have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I... We've got this vocal which, although it's got sort of a massive reverb for this particular song, but it's still nice and present. It's still nice and upfront. Now, finally, what I would often do in this case is go back to my original reverb plugin and I just have a little bit of pre-delay. In fact, I already did it on here. I've just created about you know, 40 seconds or so. Um, so that the, the bigger reverb is not happening until after that initial delay. Uh, that's just the way I like to do it. You can play around with some different settings on that. Now, some of the variations would be that quite a lot of people don't actually use a delay plugin uh, for this stage. They would just use a reverb plugin. But we're just looking for that initial effect of some uh, initial reflections, okay, early reflections. Other variations would be that some people will also use a medium reverb, perhaps even an, another one as well, three or four plugins, and then sort of blend all of them together. Okay, so I don't tend to go that far, but I know lots of people do, 
and definitely experiment with that yourself. Now, if you find that particularly large reverbs are still getting in the way of your original source, making it less distinct, then what you can try is some compression on the actual reverb or ducking as they call it. Essentially what we're going to do is use a compressor to lower the volume of the reverb while this vocal is actually happening, while she's actually singing and, and then only release it when she stops singing. So I'll take my original reverb channel here, I'm just going to grab a compressor and drop it on there after the actual reverb plugin, okay? And importantly, I'm gonna sidechain this. So in, in other words, I'm gonna use the original vocal as my source for the compressor to suppress the volume of the reverb. So here in Studio One, the way I do that is to go up to sidechain here, and then I will select the main vocal as my source for the sidechain, okay? The other thing I'm gonna do is make this a uh, pre-fader uh, send. So in other words, it's not going to be affected by the fader. I'm only doing that so that I can turn the original vocal down and we can just hear what's happening with the compressed signal. That's exactly what I'm going to do now is just turn that fader down. Let's have a listen to what's happening so far. Nothing's happening so far because we haven't set the threshold correctly. So let's just push this threshold down until we start to get some actual compression. I'm just going to push the ratio up a little bit so we're getting more compression. So you can hear the actual reverb sound is lowering in volume every time the vocalist sings. Now, I think you need to play around a little bit with the attack and release on this so it doesn't sound too harsh. We don't want to hear that sort of coming in and out. So I find it just smooths off a bit if I just push the attack and the release up somewhat. We'll have a listen to this. So it is just compressing that vocal a little bit. I could do it a little bit more. Sorry, the reverb. Have a listen. And most importantly, of course, we now need to hear it with the original vocal. Have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? So the original vocal is still remaining present, but as soon as she stops singing, singing you hear that lovely tail happening there. Let's just switch that off and have a listen to this in context. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? So all in all, we have this vocal with the lovely space around it, but it's still remaining present. Before we move on to our final trick, I'd like to remind you that I highly recommend our sponsor DistroKid if you want to release your music to major platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Google Play, etc. They make it super easy for you to do that at a really great price and you'll get it even cheaper if you follow that VIP link in the description down below. A little later on in this song, I've got a guitar which comes in on the left channel and it sounds like this. And I've got another guitar, a separate performance, which comes in on the right hand channel, sounds like this. And both together they sound like this, doubled guitars. And they're sitting on top of the main guitar, which sounds like this all together. And they just slightly enhance that guitar. But what I want to do with those two higher guitars that come in a little bit later is add some nice spacious reverb on them. But I'm going to do it in a particular way. I've already created two extra buses over the end here and they've already both got reverb set up on them. I'll turn the mute off on them and they're both panned, well one of them is panned hard left and the other one is panned hard right and they're called high rev L and high rev R respectively. And the way this trick works is I take my guitar which is panned hard left and I send it to the reverb which is panned hard 
right, okay? So the dry signal from this guitar is completely coming from the left channel and the wet reverb signal is coming from the right. And I do the same with the other guitar. So the, the guitar that was panned right, I send it to the reverb, which is panned left. Let's have a listen to what that does to them. And it creates a really nice, uh, pretty sophisticated, gentle amount of width, okay? And when I add that in with my original guitar, I'm getting this lovely effect. So this is a great technique to keep in your back pocket when you want to deal with some doubled instruments or things that pan hard left and hard right. Make sure that you send them to reverbs in the opposite channel. And also, just as a little um, additional thing to this, try some different settings if you're using the same reverb plugin. Just use some slightly different settings in terms of size and maybe pre-delay, that kind of thing. That can help by with in terms of adding some more width. I wouldn't mind betting that some of you have got some variations on these tips and tricks. Please let me know about them in the comments down below below. I'd love to hear about the different ways that you guys get great results in your mixes. Now, if you're just starting out with mixing or you've been doing it for a while but need some reminders about the basics, I highly recommend that you watch this video right here.